All right, welcome everybody. Um, welcome to today's webinar, Building Your uh, Veteran-Owned Business. Today is February 9th, 2022. I'm sorry, beginning your veteran-owned business. Apologize for that. Um, my name is Michael Cisneros. I'm a training coordinator with the California um, Transition Assistance Program. Um, I'm going to just quickly give you guys an update of what we're doing today and introduce you to some of our speakers, and then we'll go ahead and start the webinar. Um, you should probably got an email either last night or sometime today um, with information about this meeting, including the, the login information. But inside that email, there was also a couple of links um, to a California uh, uh, Veterans Resource Book and a link to a link map or a local interagency network coordinator map. Um, we'll talk about both of those things coming up. Um, there uh, was also um, information about past webinars and archives, and we'll talk about it as well. Um, so just stay tuned. Uh, we'll have Danielle Tran to talk about the uh, CalTAP program and give you an overview about some of your benefits, um, followed by Annette Walliver, who will talk to you about um, her duties as a link and how she works with veterans across California or or other links work uh, with veterans across California. Then we have Daniel Bates, uh, who will talk to us about the DVBE program uh, with CalVet, and Noah Harris, who is part of the NorCal uh, Veteran Outreach uh, Veteran Business Outreach Center, um, and he'll talk to you about how they work with veterans as well. Um, after our uh, panelists speak, we will go into a virtual Q and A um, panel, and all questions will be answered there. Um, we are disabling the chat function on this event only because I will be flooding it with resources as we go over some of the things um, today. So if you do have questions for the presenters, uh, we recommend that you use that Q&A uh, Q feature on Zoom. Um, putting your questions in that, in that uh, feature will allow the group to see them. We can answer them in real time if, if needed, um, or we could hold them, uh, or we'll hold them until the very end. Um, so for all questions to panelists, please use the Q&A panel. You won't be able to use the chat. Uh, this is just instructions on how to use that Q&A panel. As you can see, there's a um, icon of chat bubbles with Q&A underneath. Just go ahead and click on that and um, answer your question that way. So now I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Danielle. She is another training coordinator with CalTAP. <clears throat> She's going to talk to you a little bit about uh, the program and also some of the benefits that are available to you as a California veteran. So when you're ready, Danny, go ahead. Hi, everybody. Go ahead and go to the next slide for me, Michael. Um, like Michael said, I'm going to be doing a quick overview of the CalTAP program. So we are here to inform and connect veterans of all areas to their earned state and federal benefits. And we do that primarily through our five pathways, core curriculum, education, employment, entrepreneurship. And then we have that fifth one for our service providers. So those who serve veterans. And so on the next slide, you'll see a copy of our veterans resource book, which you will be receiving in the chat or you would have been able to get access to when you uh, register through Zoom. And this has a wealth of information. Pretty much everything that I'm gonna be talking about today is listed here in this veteran resource book. And it's your guide to have all the details and contact numbers and all the information you're gonna need in order to be successful as a veteran here in California. Next slide. So this is a way to get to CalTAP on the calvet.ca.gov website. We are on that main page. And so I'm just gonna go into a little bit on how you can use CalTAP online. Next slide. Yes, so oh, additionally, yes. Oh, always forget to mention this. This is where you can get access to our previously recorded webinars. We do have a whole wide plethora of webinars that we have, have had over the past few years, um, and they are registered or are documented here. So you'll be able to access those um, previously after this. Next slide. So how can you use CalTAP online? So on the next slide, you'll be able to see those five pathways that I mentioned our core curriculum, education and entrepreneurship, and that one for the service providers. For the portion of this presentation, I am going to go for the core curriculum pathway. That is that first one there. And then you'll see that you'll have access to all of the information broken down in different modules based on your needs. We're gonna highlight uh, that module five uh, for your California benefits. And I'm gonna go over exactly what your California benefits are. Next slide. 
So if you are looking in your veteran resource book, it's going to be chapter one, but we'll go ahead and get started on what those are here today. So the first one is the college intuition fee waiver for veterans dependents. This does waive the cost of, uh, waives the fees and tuition at any state funded school. That's the UCs, the CSUs, and the California Community Colleges. You can potentially use this benefit to get your college degree all the way up through your doctorate and is saving veterans over $35 million a year. Next slide. The DMV programs include having veterans put on your driver license. And this is just so that you aren't being required to have to have your um, DD-214 carrying around in your pocket all the time. That is a very important document. You do wanna keep that safe and handy. So this will allow you to have something that will say you are a veteran living here and be able to get access to any benefits that might bring you. You can also get honoring veterans on your license plate. This is open to anybody who would like to honor a veteran, including um, veterans themselves. And then you might be able to qualify for the motor vehicle registration fee waiver. Next slide. This is what the veteran will look like on your driver's license. And again, it's just a way to be able to show that you are a veteran without having to carry around your DD-214. Next slide. The outdoor activities include having a fishing and hunting license at a reduced cost fee. And then for the state park pass, you would get a no cost use of all the state park systems here in California. Next slide. The tax programs include the disabled veteran property tax exemption. And that's where a portion of your um, property tax due owe would be waived. And then the business license tax and fee exemption. And then we're gonna go into the disabled veteran business enterprise program here today. Next slide. It's gonna show the website where you can get access to the county assessor's office and the county assessors who you would talk to if you were going to apply for that um, waiver for your property tax. And then again, the tax collectors is where you would get those business and tax and fees waivers. Next slide. We do have a CalVet home loan program. So this is CalVet operating as the lender if you're going to purchase a home. You can use this in combination with your VA home loan guarantee. And it's just a way to provide financing to veterans, give you low or give you competitive market interest rates or low to no down payment requirements. Next slide. The CalVet Women Veterans Program provides information, advocacy, outreach, and support to California's women veterans. They also partner with the Leadership Council, again, to make sure that they're doing everything that they can for women veterans here in California. On the next slide, you will see their website. Um, that is where you can sign up for their roster. You can also email them directly or call them if you have any questions. They also do have webinars um, very much like CalTAP. And so there's a great way to, to get some additional resources for yourself or a loved one. Next slide. The CalVet Minority Veterans also does very similar um, activities. They provide information, advocacy, outreach, and support as well. One of the big things that they do is helping unnaturalized veterans in California gain citizenship and naturalization services. Next slide. This is their page as well. So you can sign up for their roster and you can also email them directly or give them a call if you have any questions. Next slide. The CalVet Long-Term Homes. This is a great resource as well. So. As you or someone you might know, be aging, you have the option of receiving some top-notch top care, um, and it's going to be based on your income, so it's not going to be increasing every year, as unfortunately many of our long-term homes are for older people. Um, there are eight locations located throughout California, and you just have to apply. Some of them do allow spouses, so as long as you guys enter in together, that would be something that uh, could be an option for a veteran or, or a veteran that you might know. Next slide. There are three state cemeteries in addition to the National VA cemeteries. Again, we just like to point this out because the National VA cemeteries um, do run out of space sometimes, depending on where it is. And again, we wanna make sure that you guys know that you are being honored in, in every way, literally from cradle to grave here at CalVet. Next slide. So we'd like to go over a few common veteran websites that you may or may not be familiar with already. We hope you are. Um, but the first one I'm gonna go over is va.gov. This is obviously the main one. This is your the Federal Department of Veteran Affairs. All of the great information um, that you're going to need is going to be the most up-to-date here. So we do strongly recommend that you are frequenting this website frequently. Um, again, I, I saying that double, it is really a strong emphasis because sometimes they change things, sometimes they update things, and you really wanna to go to the source in terms of what your um, veteran-related healthcare, disability, and records is gonna be. 
Next slide. This is eBenefits. We also strongly recommend that you get connected to this. I mean, it can be quite a chore sometimes to reach out and connect with anything related to the VA. And so if you do have an eBenefits account, you can kind of get a little bit of easier access to um, some of your claim status, your, your military personnel file. You can also manage your health. So definitely recommend getting connected to this if you haven't already. And then on the last slide, you will see the, VA, the VA's My Health eVet. This is a great way of managing your healthcare online if you are enrolled in VA healthcare. Next slide. Um, so if you are interested in um, continuing to get access to CalTAP and just make, making uh, yourself available to us so that we can continue to check on you and support you, we do ask that you provide your non-DOD email. Again, if you haven't already done that, um, you can register for um, our homepage and get a MyCalVet account add us on Facebook, and you can also attend webinars. Oh, and, and most importantly, please fill out our, our webinar survey. And we'd like to make sure that we are doing everything we can to continuously be improving for your benefit. Next slide. This is our MyCalVet webpage. And what this is gonna do once you do register is kind of tailor information that you're going to be receiving. So that way, instead of getting you know benefits for all of California um, or getting details on benefits for all of California, they're gonna say, um, if you live in this county, they're going to tailor that website to you so to make sure that you're not having to shift through everything within the state. It's just going to apply to you locally. Next slide. And then this is our newsletter. We did just begin this a few months ago. And just another way for you guys to stay connected to us. We do have a message going out from our deputy secretary who runs veteran services. He likes to be able to reach out to you guys every month. And it has a list of whatever webinars we're hosting for that month. Next slide. And then finally, this is my information again. That's my email. Um, please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. You can call that 1-800 number anytime and any one of us will go ahead and answer that. All right. Cool. Thank you, Dan, uh, Danny. Like I said, quick overview of the program. Uh, lots of benefits out there uh, that you should know about. When you do get a chance, please take a look at that resource book. I like to say it's like gold for veterans. So if you're, you know, anything that we discussed today when it comes to California benefits, um, or any questions that you have about California benefits, you can find it there in that book. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Annette. Like I mentioned earlier, Annette is the local interagency network coordinator for the Central Valley. This is a, another great benefit that's offered through CalVet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let you uh, let her talk to you about how she works with veterans and how other links work with veterans across California. Um, go ahead, Annette, when you're ready. Okay. Hi, my name is Annette Walliver. Um, as Michael said, I'm a link. I'm basically a field rep for the state of California. I'm one of eight field reps, and we work with our federal and state agencies to ensure that veterans, current and prior military service members get connected to their benefits. Next slide, please. So this is the map. Uh, CalVet has divided the state into eight regions. Each color is a region with a coordinating link. Um, I'm the one in the middle. I'm the Central Valley link covering Stanislaw to Kern counties, representing about 144,000 veterans. Uh, as I said, we work with state and federal agencies, but we work independently within our regions to ensure that we build up a, a resource list of networks within our communities. So it's additional resources that we can provide for you. Next slide, please. So we provide outreach to service members, veterans, and their families. And we do this by staying in, in touch with our collaboratives and our uh, community members. Uh, we go to DOD installations. Recently, I was at Lamorne Blair Station because we want to reach these individuals before they're even separated from the military. Um, we also can make referrals and directly with established service provider networks. So if I'm going to refer to someone in, my, in the community, um, I want it to be a nice warm handoff. And then we assist with local emergencies. Uh, we have been very active in assisting the evacuees of the fires here in California. Last year, I was actually deployed to uh, the Porterville Local Assistance Center uh, and was assisting veterans who were victims of the SQF fires. And they were evacuated. And not only were their properties destroyed, but in some cases, all of their paperwork. And that DD Form 214, that's the gateway to benefits. 
but by working with our County Veteran Service Office, we were able to get additional copies of their DD Form 214, and then also working with CalVet Home Loan to get a certificate of eligibility so they could go forward with either a VA or a CalVet Home Loan. Um, and if they did have a CalVet Home Loan, we were there to assist them with the paperwork. Currently, the eight links of us, um, as, as well as other uh, individuals from headquarters, we're taking those calls that go into the 1-800-CALVET. So whether I get a call from Klamath Falls or San Diego, because I know the resources, the state and federal resources, I'm able to assist them. And if we need to get more ad additional resources in their community, I can contact their coordinating link because we're the subject matter experts in our areas. And then we provide leadership and advocacy to local communities uh, by staying in touch with our community partners. We ensure they're uh, informed about the benefits and services, if there's any changes to benefits and services, and also if there's any gaps that we can identify and forward to headquarters. Uh, next slide, please. So these are the agencies we work with day in and day out, and we wanna get you connected to your benefits. And I always say I'm the poster child for getting connected to your benefits. I served in the United States Army from 1975 to 1978. Um, I used my GI Bill, got my degree, uh, got a VA home loan, and I thought, well, that's pretty much it. And it wasn't until 12 years ago when I started working for the state of California, I realized I could file for compensation. So I have a service-connected disability, which leads to additional benefits. Um, I'm also enrolled in VA healthcare. So we wanna get you in touch with these agencies because in many cases, these benefits do not expire. So employment and training is the employment development department. They have dedicated staff that work solely with veterans. Uh, so they can assist whether it's resume preparation, interview skills, or just getting you connected to an employer. And they are co-located in the America's Job Center of California. And these are throughout the country, but throughout the state of California, you can find where there is an AJCC, they have computers, scanners, copiers, all these are, uh, you can use at no cost to you. And you can also find out if there's an EDD vet rep who can assist you. California state benefits, that's what CalVet is all about. I always say we're the other VA. Um, so we wanna make sure you're aware of those benefits that California provides. And every state has different benefits and different eligibilities, um, but it's the County Veterans Service Office. These CVSOs are the boots on the ground. They administer the state and federal benefits. So whether you wanna file for compensation, college tuition fee waiver paperwork, DMV, they're there to guide you through that process. And then healthcare, we should be mindful of our healthcare at this time. Uh, the VA medical centers and clinics and vet center are available. Um, if you want to enroll in VA healthcare, you can do it online or you can just call one of their offices and ask for eligibility and they maybe do, do it for you right away. Um, I know a lot of my appointments in the last year have been telehealth and VA Connect, so it's been very easy for me to stay in touch with my medical providers. Uh, next slide, please. So if you remember nothing else, this is my contact information. Um, I'd be more than happy to assist you. As I said, um, I'm a United States Army veteran with a service-connected disability, um, so I can do that soft handoff if you need any assistance. So thank you for your service. Hi, right, thank you, Annette. Awesome, awesome uh, benefit that's offered through CalVet. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to Sean. Sean is another training coordinator with uh, CalTAP, and he's gonna talk to you about our entrepreneurship pathway um, and uh, just bring your attention to some resources that might help you uh, in the process of growing your business or starting a business if you are looking into a veteran owned business. So Sean, when you're ready, go ahead. Thank you, Michael. Um, next slide, please. Let's talk a little bit about veteran businesses. When we talk about when being motivated to move your product, especially when your product is you, whether you're installing cable wire or you're painting or you're doing vehicle repairs or landscaping, about 10% of all the businesses in, in California are veteran owned businesses. So there's a lot of great things that, that we can do as veterans out there. Next slide, please, to help move the economy of California. When you're starting to develop your business, it's best to get a good solid business plan, decide where you're going to locate your business, choose your structure. Are you going to have something that's uh, based at, uh, on in one location? Are you going to have an uh, online business or do both? File your tax inf and employer information, and of course, obtain any necessary licenses and permits that are required 
Next slide, please. So when we're doing all of those things, because it's such a huge list, there's so many things going on. We want to make sure that you're aware of the wide variety of resources that are out there to help you. Small, uh, small business resources from the state of California. The list that my teammate's showing you right here, Secretary of State's office, Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development, Small Business Advocacy, the Grants Portal, that's something that's a great location to get turned on to free money that's out there for you to get your business started. And the Department of General Services, if you're looking to do business with the state of California specifically, there's a great three-part webinar series that'll really train you on how to do business with the state and remove some of those barriers. Next slide, please. At the federal level, you've got the Small Business Association and uh, the VBOC, the, we've got a great presenter here today who's gonna to talk to you more specifically about that and the SCORE program as well. They're gonna go over those federal resources that are out there to assist you as you're building your business. Next slide, please. Some non-government based resources. There might be a fee involved with these, but these are great resources out there for you. And my counterpart's gonna drop some of this information in the chat as well. Next slide, please. So certification programs. When we're talking about certification programs, there's three main programs that we're talking about. We're talking about a small business certification, a disabled veteran business enterprise certification, and on the federal level, the service disabled veteran owned business. Um, the other presenters that are gonna come on today are really gonna give you the in-depth information about this. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that to them. And I just wanna make sure that you know and have our contact information. Can you just, next slide, please. Because there's a lot of great benefits from these things, but my counterparts are gonna go over the different benefits that are out there from having these three different certifications. And in some instances, you might be eligible for all three. You might be eligible for small business and for the California Sable Veteran Business Enterprise and for the federal side as well. They are looking for some requirements though. 51% of the business should be controlled by a veteran. And uh, there's some eligibility as far as service connected disability ratings. And again, my teammates or the other presenters are gonna go over that. Next slide, please. Here's our contact information. Again, there's a lot going on. We want to make sure that you have the ability to contact us to get your questions answered when we're going over any type of enterprises or your benefits through the state of California. And thank you for your time. All right. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, it's a quick little uh, introduction to that pathway with the entrepreneurship pathway on our website at calvet.ca.gov. Um, it brings your attention to um, a list of different resources. And most of those resources that we touched on, um, on in this segment, um, most of them offer the same things. Um, you know, whether you're looking for mentorships or grants or um, information about how to start the business or, or make it grow, um, most of those resources, you, um, um, can, you can get the same kind of help. Um, so quick little introduction to that pathway. Um, and also, before I move on to the next one, I did want to um, just reiterate what, Dan what Danny said earlier was, yes, we are recording this event. Um, we will be posting it on our website along with the PowerPoint. So if you are curious about some of those resources that Sean mentioned, um, you know, and you want, you want to check some of them out, um, feel free to download that PowerPoint and um, start doing your research. So I'll go ahead now and pass it on to Daniel Bates. Daniel is with our DVBE unit. He's a program analyst for the uh, for the program, um, and he's going to let you know uh, how they how let you know a little bit about the program um, and uh, some some details that you should probably know if you are interested in starting your veteran uh, owned business. So when you're ready, Daniel, go ahead. All right, hi, thanks, Michael. Um, so the DVB unit is myself and my counterpart Sheree Nuez. Um, we run the DVB program at. Calvet, next slide, please, please. So at Calvet, we have the state advocate, which is our secretary. Um, he is the advocate for the DVB program. He also serves as the co-chair of the DVB advisory council. The advisory council is a group of DVBEs and um, affiliates of DVBEs that bring forth um, ideas, concerns, complaints um, to the director level of CalVet. Um, we also support the state in contracting with 3% of, or we also assist the state to meet the 3% contracting requirement. So the state has to 
contract 3% of all um, procurement with DVBs. Um, what that means is that when the state spends $12 billion, 3% of that 12 billion goes to DVBEs. Um, I'll get more into that um, in the later in the presentation. And then I already spoke about the advisory council and then the DVB request for response. That's a way of getting in touch with um, the DVB unit, the advisory council, um, any questions or concerns you have regarding the DVB program, that's the avenue to uh, reach us. Next slide, please. So our roles and responsibilities, we assist prime contractors that are non-DVBE um, find DVBs for subcontracting opportunities. Not only does the state require 3% of all their contracting dollars to be with DVBs, but on large contracts, they, prime contractors have to spend between one to 5% with DB, DVBE firms. Um, we also evaluate DVBE subcontractor substitutions. Now that is when a prime contractor has agreed to do business with a DVB, but for some, for some instances, um, if it's construction and the DVB lost their um, contractor's license, they something happened, and they are unable to find another DVB to subcontract with, then CalVet reviews that um, um, substitution request and determines if there are no other DVBs to. Um, perform those duties and we give them a yes or no answer. We, we review the DVB exemption request. So that means where departments have the opportunity to put out a bid that doesn't have a DVB requirement for the prime contractors. Now that's for um, instances where there are no DVBs or very few DVBs in that field. There are no opportunities for subcontracting. Those would be the only reasons that the DVB exemption request is approved. Um, next slide, please. So the DVB certification requirements. Now you must be a um, veteran. Um, you must be at least 10% service connected. You must live in California. The business must reside in California as well. And you have to be at least 51% owner of the company. Now, that is for everything else besides an LLC. If it's an LLC, 100% of that company needs to be owned by a disabled veteran or a group of disabled veterans. Um, next slide, please. Now, the benefits, the true benefits of being a DVB. So I already mentioned 3% of contracting must be spent with DVBs, but the true benefit is you don't have, so departments do not have to go competitive up to a penny less than a quarter of a million dollars for goods and services. Now, if they know you, your company is out there and they need computers and they reach out to you and they ask you if you can provide the computers, you say yes at a certain amount and they can just award it to you. Now that's not a competitive bid. Um, now, if you're just a small business or you know a large company, they'll put it out and everyone has to bid. They'll take the lowest uh, bidder or the best fit bidder. Now, for public works construction, they can award up to $333,000 directly to a DVB. Um, so those are the, the big benefits of it. Not only the 3%, but the non-competitive uh, options that are there. Next slide, please. Okay, so the certification um, program that is at host or hosted by DGS, they are the ones that certify all the DVBEs, small businesses. Now, if you're starting out, I recommend you um, register as a small business and the DVB because the state also has not only the 3% is for DVBs, but 25% has to be uh, contracted with small businesses. So it's always good to be uh, dual certified. Um, it helps you, it helps the um, prime contractor, it helps the department, you're, you're meeting two goals at the same time. Um, and if you had questions about being um, certified, we have direct um, contacts with the certification officers at uh, CalVet, I mean, sorry, DGS. 
and we could um, put you in touch with them if you're re if you're ready. If your company is up and running and you're an actual company and you're ready to go, they can get you certified in less than a month. Uh, typically, two weeks is the certification uh, process time. Uh, next slide, please. So the Department of General Services, as um, Sean mentioned earlier, is they have the three-part webinar series. It's great. It's a, honestly the best webinar out there for, um, they have all the procurement staff through the state though. Um, they partner with DGS and they um, give you all the ins and outs about being certified. Um, the first one is how to do business with the state of California. They'll give you an explanation of how to do it, what to do, how to get certified. Then you get certified, now what? That's the biggest thing is you get certified then you still don't know where to go. They'll give you all the answers to that. And then they'll give you tips and tricks to be successful in contracting with the state of California. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, and the certification process is, it's um, housed by DGS, but it's also on Cali Procure that you have to register it. Um, and if you had any questions, Cal Procure has great resources. If you just wanted to look and see what kind of contracts are out there, on the top of, uh, it's just caleprocure.ca.gov and on the quick links, um, you can go there, you can find uh, certified um, firms, small business, DVBEs, micro businesses. Um, you can look up uh, contractors, licenses, you can um, find procurement opportunities. Just so you have an idea, if you're, you're here and you're just, trying to figure out what to do, that's a good place to start. You can look at um, um, open contracts that are out there and um, try to gear your company towards that. Next slide. Okay, so the CalTAP curriculum, um, they discussed earlier in this presentation, um, the DVB Advisory Council, as I mentioned before, that is a group of um, DVBEs and um, veteran services that um, we have monthly meetings at CalVet to discuss topics, um, uh, legislation. Uh, matter of fact, we have AB 1574 that we're talking about that just went in effect. We have SB 588. Those all deal with DVB participation. Um, and then we have the request for a response. Um, it's a quick survey. It's a way to get in touch with us. Uh, we respond to the uh, request for response within a week, um, provide any resources that are necessary, um, and then we can contact you for any questions that you have. Um, next slide, please. And then that's on uh, CalVet webpage. If you uh, go to calvet.ca.gov, uh, you go to um, uh, programs, vet services, DVBE, and you'll find it there. Um, it is a great resource to get a hold of us. Um, as I mentioned before, it's the fastest way to get in touch with us. Uh, next slide. Okay, so um, DGS procurement um, division, that is where they house um, events, they house the certification office, um, that is the go-to spot for the public, um, state employees. That is where everything is housed. If you have any questions regarding the DVB program, small business program, contracting with the state, it's all on there. Um, when you go to DGS, you just go to the procurement division and you can find all the resources on that webpage. And if you complete the request for a response, I can send you every single link that is out there to help you. And then Cali Procure, as I mentioned before, it, let you, it shows you the bid uh, process, open contracts, and um, certified firms. And currently there are about 1,850 DVBEs registered in California. Next slide. So the Small Business Administration, that is a great resource to look to go to. They have uh, mentorship, they have um, veterans outreach um, programs, they have the uh, PTAC, Procurement Technical Assistance Center. They'll also have um, opportunities for 
um, grant programs. Um, they'll put you in touch with, uh, with lenders. Um, these are lenders that are approved by the SBA. Um, and they'll even, they have resources out there to help you put together a business plan. Um, and SCORE is a great um, um, partner with them. Um, they're just all honestly very good opportunities. And if you had time, just go to that link right there and um, see all the opportunities that are out there. Uh, next slide. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much for um, participating in uh, this part of the survey or this part of the presentation. Um, if you had any questions, you can email us as well at the dvb at calvet.ca.gov. Um, that is an uh, email that goes to our unit. If you had um, any other questions, please feel free to um, email us. All right. Thank you, Daniel. So yeah, just a little bit about the certification process through CalVet and through the state of California. Um, if you are a disabled veteran looking to open your own business. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to our final uh, presenter, Noah Harris. Noah is actually the director of the NorCal VBOC. There's actually two VBOCs here in California. Um, one here in Sacramento, I believe, and then one in um, Carlsbad. And please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but uh, he's going to talk to you quickly about, or not quickly, but he's going to talk to you about how they uh, work with veterans um, and um, the type of assistance that they offer to veterans. So when you're ready, Noah, go ahead. All right. Thank you very much. You can go ahead and proceed to the next slide. Thank you very much uh, for putting together this opportunity to uh, share with veterans throughout the state the resources that are available. Real briefly, um, obviously, I am very motivated to be here and talk about it. I actually jumped, jumped the gun a little bit earlier. Apologies for that. I just get really fired up and eager to share with veterans about what's available to help them. As has been stated already, a lot of the uh, purpose for webinars like this is to help veterans to identify resources and more importantly to to navigate them because there are so many programs and there's so many uh, resources that quite frankly it can be a little disorienting to keep up with it all and as it relates to veterans interested in either starting or growing a business i would just highly encourage you to just go ahead and contact either me or my colleague at the socal vbach they are located in carlsbad our office uh for the Northern California VBOC is situated in Fairfield. And essentially we are one of the working arms, so to speak, of the US Small Business Administration. And our sole mission and focus is to help veterans who are interested in starting businesses or already have businesses to get them, um, quote unquote, squared away and keep them that way. Or very specifically to identify whatever that veteran has as his or her goal for the business and make sure that they have the resources, direct support, training, um, and connections to make it all happen. We do that primarily through one-on-one -on -one counseling and mentorship. That looks like um, myself and, and people from our program working directly with veterans, as well as when it comes time for them to identify lenders to get loan ready. Um, one of our core offerings nationwide and the Veterans Business Outreach Program is nationwide. Typically, you're gonna have a VBOC in virtually every state or in some cases servicing multiple states. But bottom line, we provide um, two, you could call them SBA kind of flagship uh, business planning workshops. They're not designed to turn anyone into an MBA or anything else like that. They're more quick, uh, grounded, focused overviews to identify the key things that anyone looking to get into business for the first time, or even someone who already has a business and needs to refresh, it's going to give them that opportunity to get really clear on what are those relevant foundational pieces to keep their business viable. And so we do these boots to business uh, trainings, as they're called, uh, on both military installations for transitioning service members. And in this current um, pandemic environment, the majority of all of our trainings right now are virtual. And that means that they're a lot more accessible 
to not only service members who are already affiliated with an installation, but also to veterans who may have been out of the military for a while. And I digress, I, I forgot to mention, I'm an Army Explosive Ordnance Disposal veteran uh, myself. Um, so EOD was my first uh, job as an adult. I've done a lot of other things since then, including um, having been in this particular role before, uh, as well as working in the SBA Resource Partner Network, specifically the Small Business Development Centers, and then additionally in a lending environment for a nonprofit lender focused on veteran small business loans from $50,000 to $250,000. And I mentioned that to say that the types of services that we're providing are based in real world experience. And as has also been mentioned, some of the other SBA resource partners like the Procurement Technical Assistance Centers or PTACs or the Women's Business Centers and SCORE. The bottom line is there, again, there's so many acronyms out there, it's hard to keep up with it. Bottom line, if you're a veteran looking to get into business or looking to grow your existing business, please just go ahead and, and contact either uh, me or the other SoCal um, VBOC director, or quite frankly, your local SBA district offices or even your local SPDCs. But I'd say to keep it simple, just contact me or my colleague and we'll uh, shorten the, shorten the uh, the process for you as best we can and get you the support you need to move forward. And a little bit more about the boots to business real quick that I think is really relevant. What I will do is I'll make sure to share um, post webinar, I'll make sure to share with the, the hosts and um, confirm that it's available, the schedule, the national schedule. Actually, it's all public information. It's on the SBA's website. But um, in the interest of, of simplicity, I'll make sure that that gets followed up on so that everyone knows the way to sign up for any of the free Boots to Business classes or Boots to Business reboots, um, quite frankly, nationwide that fit with your schedule that you can attend, get a, get a review, refresher, and or jumpstart on what do you need to do to get your business, either your business idea or concept to that next level, or to get your existing business to the next level. And the second phase of the training that I, I really want, want to emphasize is, it's called Boots to Business Revenue Readiness. And that class, which is also free, it focuses on the business plan itself and financials. So on the other side of the program, a person has a business plan that is, uh, quite frankly, there's a, if, if a veteran would, go and use this uh, liveplan.com system on their own, it will cost them somewhere in the neighborhood of $320, but it's all free just using, um, using the V-Box. So you get it for free and you can maintain it for as long as you want, carry it with you, share it. And then inside of that liveplan.com um, business plan, you have financials, which are very important when it comes to uh, getting ready to get funded. As I mentioned a little bit, we are uh, very closely aligned and, and working with the other resource partners. So when it comes time to get funding, we're able to provide you with very specific information as opposed to uh, general information, give you specific lenders who are likely to um, fund the kind of businesses that you're interested in. And I'd say one of the most important benefits is that we can um, look at and help you get lender ready before you even talk to a, a, a potential lender. And then real briefly on the contract side of things, as has been mentioned, the Procurement Technical Assistance Centers or PTACs, we work very closely with them. Uh, so anyone interested in government contracting at the federal, state, or local level, we absolutely uh, work closely with them. Um, but in addition to that, in, in case people attending did not know, there is a move that is happening at the end of this calendar year where the SBA is actually going to be um, taking uh, on some of the federal certifications that the VA has traditionally done. And um, even though it's, again, it's not my primary MOS, so to speak, but it is a secondary and I have uh, been able to help 
veterans who are either looking to get certified at the federal level uh, through the VA for the first time or getting uh, recertified, been able to help them navigate that process. So again, this uh, webinar, this, this brief introduction isn't designed to um, go into the weeds necessarily of all the different things that the VBOX do, but suffice it to say that if you have a business related concern, I highly recommend and encourage and invite you to, to simply contact um, myself, or if you happen to be in Southern California, contact my colleague, Ms. Uh, Ms. Kelly Ben-Hamanthus, ben and bottom line, we'll do what we can to, if we can't help you directly ourselves, we'll make sure you get connected with the people who can. And for the most part, that is uh, what we do. Naturally, yes, next slide. If you've got any, um, any other questions or concerns, you can reach me uh, directly uh, at, at this number. This number goes directly to me. Um, and even on our website, it, there's a there's a, a informational form or an, and a request for services on the website as well as in the upper right hand corner on the landing page to sign up for services. Uh, naturally, these are uh, our tax dollars at work. It's all free and confidential. And so uh, I invite and encourage you to get your money's worth. You've already been paying for it. So if you got a question related to business, um, help us to help you. So thank you for your time and your attention. And again, thank you to all the other panelists and hosts for all that you all do for veterans. And thank you everyone in attendance who is a veteran. Thank you for your service. All right, thank you. Appreciate that, Noah. Um, appreciate you stepping in and helping, helping us out with this too. And I apologize for that slip. I hope that didn't break your concentration uh, with the flow that you had, um, but thank you. Uh, as for the uh, individual who asked for the contact information, um, this is uh, uh, contact information uh, to Noah Harris's office, um, to Noah Harris directly, as he said. Uh, and so for those of you who have questions, uh, feel free to reach out to him. Um, we're gonna go ahead and now move into the questions and answers portion of the webinar. Um, along with Noah Harris's contact information, this is a contact information for all the uh, presenters today. Um, so if you do have questions that weren't answered or maybe not answered sufficiently, or you have questions that are that have built off of the questions that um, you've already ans asked, feel free to reach out and we could definitely get those um, we could get those answered. Um, I do see that we have a lot of uh, we had a lot of questions come through already that were answered. And I see that uh, Dave, D Daniel did a really good job at um, answering those uh, DVBE questions. I'm just going to go through, uh, in case some of you weren't paying attention to this section, I'm just going to go through and read some of those um, so that we can all uh, have that information. Um, so this person says, I'm 100% uh, PNT disabled vet. Uh, when I sent in for my DMV waiver, they rejected the VA memo and asked for a memo from a VSO. Why would they reject that? Uh, the VA, VA sent me saying 100% PT. All right, and so Dan, uh, Dan, Danielle uh, did respond to this one. Um, requires you to, so the DMV requires you to submit a form called the VSD-001. And when you're applying for the fee waiver, or when you are applying for the fee waiver, when you have to go to your VSO office to get the form, they will ensure that it's filled out correctly, uh, as well as verify you meet the requirements for the waiver. Once that is complete, you take that complete form to the DMV and apply for the waiver. So that is a step that is missed often um, when you are doing any kind of processes uh, with the DMV, whether it's the uh, getting the veteran on your license, on your driver's license, or um, the fee waiver, or I'm sorry, the honorary veterans license plate program. Um, you do need to start at your county veteran service office. Uh, they will be the ones to verify your uh, your veteran status uh, and uh, will start the paperwork for you. Thanks for uh, catching that one, uh, Danny. Yeah, I also want to note that um, unless it's changed recently, I know there's some changes on the, the VSD-001 form, but the in order to receive the registration fee waiver, the disability does have to be mobility related. So check in and make sure that's still true. I believe it's still true, but again, they've recently updated how you apply for it. But if you're not 
if it's still the same, if you're not, uh, don't have a disability related or a mobility related disability, even if you are 100%, it will not apply. Right. Yeah, definitely. I haven't heard about that changing. Um, I do know, yeah. I remember it saying that 100% disabled and the disability has effect mobility. Um, I have another uh, individual asking about the fee waiver and a student who is uh, doing a semester overseas. And Danny caught this one too. Um, maybe able to use uh, education benefits. Um, so with the uh, education benefits, um, if you have uh, approved the program, the program is at an institution of higher learning where they'll, uh, where she'll earn standard associate degree or higher, um, a degree of equal value or foreign. So basically any accredited college um, and the program does have to be approved by the VA. Um, exception family members who qualify for survivors and dependents educational assistance can get VA benefits while in a while in approved post-secondary or high school non-college degree programs at the training locations in the Philippines. So caveat right there. Um, for the slides, we did, as I said earlier, we are gonna post them on our website along with the recording of this video. Um, Danny also added a PDF copy to the chat. So if you check out that uh, the resources in the chat, you'll find that, that link there. <clears throat> Someone asked, what's the difference between small businesses and large businesses? Um, uh, sorry, I just lost it. So, uh, the standard different differ depending on the industry, uh, small business administration has a table that you can reference to make a determination. So there is a link that Danny posted from, from the small business administration website that, um, talks about the, uh, the differences and how you can, um, gauge whether or not you have a small business or a large business. Michael, I can speak on the certification. Yeah, yeah, please. So the small business certification, that is you can be a small business as long as you make less than $15 million in a three-year period. If you make more than $15 million after that three-year period, when you get recertified, they'll take that small business certification away from you. Um, because when you apply for certification, you have to provide your last three years of um, income tax for your business, or if you're brand new and starting out, you have to provide your personal tax returns. Okay. Um, and that's for, um, to be certified. But the small business certification, that is um, anything less than $15 million in profit in a three year period. Cool, all right, thanks for clarifying that for us. Someone asked, what's the difference between nonprofit and for-profit, I'm sorry, um, any differences between nonprofit and for-profit veteran business benefits? Uh, Daniel, you answered, uh, there are differences for profits. For profits, you are providing a good or service. Nonprofits is specific to your organization and what you do. Um, more answers, you can email the DVBE. Um, but yeah, I guess what it comes down to is, um, are, you, are you providing goods and services for um, um, profit for yourself or are you providing something that's like a humanitarian um, effort? I believe that's what the, the nonprofits are. And if so, depending on what you are, there are different resources out there. And we did um, have a couple, couple slides that kind of brought up a, a few of those resources specifically for nonprofits um, and then with the federal or the state um, resources, there are a list as well. There is a list as well. Okay, how can I get fun? How can I get funding for a startup business? Um, how much would I need to contribute to a startup business? Uh, da Danielle posted some links, uh, and I'll go ahead and put these in the chat as well for those of you that are paying attention to that. Uh, these are links that you can uh, use to find out more about um, funding for startups. For DVB uh, LLCs, can the veteran spouse satisfy the wholly owned veteran um, company? No, it will, it will need to be owned 100% by the disabled veteran. That is a requirement. Uh, are there any uh, added incentive benefits incentives or benefits for 100% uh, disabled veterans starting a business? 
Uh, as long as a veteran is 10%, they qualify for the DVBE certification. <clears throat> there are no additional benefits for being 100%. So 10% uh, is, the, is the minimum to qualify for the DVBE certification. Um, with the federal certification, which we didn't uh, touch on much today, uh, it is a certificate, I believe it's zero to 100. Um, and Danny, if, if you want. It, it, it's zero percent for the feds. Okay, yeah, right. So that's zero percent is minimum. Uh, all right, are business plans public property or are they private information? Would I be able to look at business plans from a company that is already established? A business plan is a company's property. This is not a public document. And thank you for clearing that up, Daniel. Uh, no, his contact information is there. Uh, is there a B2B session tomorrow? B2B session. Does anybody know what B2B is? B2B is boots to business. I, oh. I attempted to respond to that. Um, there, there may be, but the one that I am leading is next Thursday, and I led one yesterday. But bottom line, uh, what I'll do, if we have a little bit of time, I will uh, send you a link, Michael, to the National uh, Boots to Business calendar so that anyone interested in any Boots to Business or Reboot can see that calendar and sign up for the class that fits their schedule. Yeah, yeah, definitely send that to me. Um, for those of you, uh, if you want to reach out to either Danielle or Sean, um, we could definitely get that to that link to you guys um, as soon as possible. Thanks for uh, giving that, Noah. Uh, and then there was another question for Noah. It looks like he answered, uh, but this one says, I'm launching a nonprofit this year, help with veterans um, with PTSD, mental health, wellness, and suicide awareness. How do I apply for funding? He's going to work with that veteran um, uh, head on. Let's see. Do you, need a, do you need to have your business? This is a new question. I got two new questions. This one says, do you need to have your business, your business license before getting started with you all? So do you need a business license to get before starting with a DVBE rep or going and speaking with somebody at a, at a VBOC? Well, you definitely, I can speak for the VBOC. You definitely do not need a business license. And that's one of the things that we kind of clarify. I like to describe it as uh, for everyone in the military, uh, we, we remember what MEPS was like or the military entrance processing station. More paperwork than we ever knew existed and a whole lot of um, administrative, administrative steps that were important but they were very distinct and they didn't have anything to do with what we actually did at basic training or our, or our individual specialty training. The point being is that there are things that are administrative that are very important to comply with that do not really speak to your material ability to do your business. So the long story short is that if you need help with your business, I would say just simply contact us and then we'll help you sort out what you need to do and in what order they are both important but they're not prerequisites as far as I'm concerned for working with the, with the VBOC. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and for the next question, the kind, I guess that kind of answers this one as well. Um, you know, if you're looking for specific resources for a specific business, you may want to reach out um, to one of the VBOCs. I know, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Sean did mention a website called score.org earlier. Um, that's kind of what we, what we say for those of you that don't have a VBOC in your area, you could always go to score.org. Um, they offer some of the same resources online. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for specific resources about a specific business, I would get with, um, I would either check out the, the websites that we've listed, uh, in this webinar, or just speak with somebody directly at one of those, uh, centers. I did find on, on the VA's website, they do have the, um, it looked like the Boots to Business event on their webpage. So I did post two links. One is for their general calendar. And then the second one is for the, the actual Boots to Business reboot entrepreneurial training. Great. All right. Um, I have one that's, that's a, a education 
um, question, and this is uh, based off of something that Danny said earlier. Um, I can answer. So with the with the education benefits, what she was talking about was our um, tuition and fee waiver. Uh, the tuition and fee waiver uh, can waive tuition and fees at any state fund uh, state funded school, um, and it, you could use it for any degree: associates, uh, bachelor's, doctorates, uh, masters. Uh, the thing is that this is that this benefit is for dependents, um, so it's not specifically for um, the veteran, and that's because we want the veteran to actually not have to worry about giving their education benefits to um, their dependents and not being able to use it themselves. So, so for you, if you if you have used up all your education benefits, unfortunately, there wouldn't be anything through the VA or through CalVet that can help you um, um, get further in your education goals. Uh, depending on what uh, what chapter you are taking advantage of. Um, and if you do have at least, I believe it's one day left, um, you may be able to look into, um, uh, it used to be called Voc Rehab, now it's Veterans Readiness and Employment, VRNE. Um, if you speak with the VRNE counselor and they determine that you do need more um, uh, education to find a suitable career that matches with your disability, uh, then they can increase your education benefits to 46 months. Um, so that's, probably the only other way that a veteran can um, get more education benefits uh, rather uh, if if they haven't used them all just yet so I hope that answers your question um, if if you if you have used up all your uh, benefits I would definitely recommend looking into scholarships if that's a possibility um, there's tons of scholarships out there that are veteran specific um, and so, and, and with the scholarships, people don't really take advantage of them because sometimes they do require you to write an essay um, or they just require work. And so there's a lot of money out there that's not being taken advantage of. So if you are looking for more money to finish your um, education goals and you've already used up your, uh, your GI Bill, then um, I would definitely take, uh, take a look uh, online for scholarships. Uh, are there any programs? So this will be. We'll take this last question since we are over the time. Are there any programs, resources that help with assisting and writing your business plan? Um, yeah, there, there, there are. Uh, most of those websites that we've listed um, during the entrepreneurship section on this webinar, um, most of them do help out with those kind of services. Uh, that's the reason why we've kind of grouped them and list them because they do they do offer pretty much the same thing depending on uh, you know, whichever one you go to, you're pretty much gonna get the same kind of help. Um, and helping write business plans is one of those uh, services that they, um, that they do offer. All right, uh, so even if you are 100%, PT Calvet doesn't waive the fees, right? Even if this is the same question about education benefits, yeah, even if you are 100%, um, we, we still wouldn't waive tuition and fees for the veteran, it's for, it's for dependents only. If that's the, that's good, the same question. All right, so for the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shut down the Q&A now. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being here. I do wanna bring your attention to a couple more web, uh, webinars we have for the month of February. Um, I don't know if Danielle mentioned this uh, when she was talking about our newsletter, but for the month of February, we are focusing on education. Uh, so if you have any, um, you know, if you want to uh, learn a little bit more about, you know, um, navigating stressors of distance learning, um, maximize your education benefits, or just know a little bit more about the GI Bill, feel free to tune into any one of these webinars. You can just simply go to our Eventbrite page and register that way. Um, I want to thank you guys all again for being here, uh, for hanging out to the very end. Thank you to our panelists for um, offering uh, their information and being around for the questions. Um, and we will see you guys at the next one. Everybody have a good day.